Oh, oh, oh. 
Namaste Sarasate Devi Gauravani Vishari Ne Nirvasesha Sanyavadi Pasta Chari Shatani Namaste Sarasate Devi Gauravani Vishari Ne Nirvasesha Sanyavadi Pasta Chari Shatani Vanchika Patrubhya Sacha Vikasindu Vyavisha 
Vishnum Pavanabhyo, Vaishnavabhyo, Namo Namaha, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, 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 Hare Krishna. Um, Lord Nataraj Prabhu, yes. can the devotees online see this verse? No, ma'am. What are they seeing right now? They're seeing this. Where will they see the verse? Mm -hmm. We're reading from the um, sixth chapter, right over time, chapter 12, I think it was 12? Nine. No, they see. This is the set follow on from yesterday. Sixth Canto Bhagavatam, chapter nine, text 41. So I think you can see now the verse on the screen. So we won't uh, repeat the verse. I'll just try to read the verse through one time. We're um, in an, a city in France called Lyon. We're visiting our Sankirtan devotees here in Lyon. We've been one almost a month traveling, three weeks in Spain and Portugal. We've been back in France for five or six days now, and uh, we'll be heading off to New Mayapur tomorrow, Krishna willing. And we'll be starting our, our uh, Goranga Book Marathon, Ronitai Book Marathon, um, in a few days' time. Um, for the pleasure of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So uh, let's go to the verse now. Asmakam tavakanam tata tata natanam hare tavacharana nalina yugala dhyana nubara vidaya nikaranam falinga vivarane natmasat vitanam anukampa Naranjita Vishada Ruchira Shishirsha Shishira Smita Valokena Vigalita Madura Mukara Samita Kalaya Chantastapam Anagarhasi Shamaitam. Hmm. No, I don't know if there's any meter to that verse, but it doesn't look like it. But what is interesting, I just glanced at this verse and the word for word meanings of this verse. There's some very interesting words. Um, always are interesting words. Every word is interesting in a sense. In Sanskrit, it's language in of itself, which can purify our consciousness. Although it's not the goal of life, and it's not the ultimate, let's say, purpose by any means. Um, Tavakanam. Solely tavakanam, solely dependent upon you. This is the prayers of the demigods. Um, they are praying, Lord Brahman and uh, Lord Indra, especially to um, to Lord Vishnu for protection, because they are afraid this great fiery demon, um, Vritrasura. It's not fiery. This great demon Vritrasura is um, seems to be beyond their capacity to overcome. The whole material world is like you could say in a sense, it's a reminder, the whole material world is like that. It's beyond our capacity to overcome. Uh, though we try to, we try to conquer over, we try to defeat death, we try to defeat others, we try to defeat disease, and so many other um, undefeatable um, say, enemies, in the case of the living entity, practically speaking, or opposition. It's not possible. We cannot. We cannot overcome this material energy, try as we may. Um, it's beyond our ability. Only those who surrender unto the Lord can uh, cross beyond it. So when we're in this material world, when we're under the influence of the modes of nature, a pure devotee who's transcendental may not have any fear because everything's external. All the miseries of this material world are superfluous to the um, to the living entity, whether we know it or not, they're actually superfluous. But people don't know that. So therefore, she, um, they, they, this can be overcome by the linking process of devotional service. But generally, 
um, people don't uh, take that up. Uh, they don't. They don't. They can't relate to that very easily. And even devotees who don't take full shelter of devotional service, and we're still affected by the you know the duality of this world, our past conditioning, events going on around us. <clears throat> Just like now, where um, where there's the um, the crisis. I suppose you could call it the crisis, to say the least, um, brewing between Russia and Ukraine, where Russia is now on the verge of. Um, perhaps um, you know, attacking Ukraine. And people are no doubt feeling concerned in that regard, or so the coronavirus, anything. There's always something which um, brings about, our modern media, of course, accelerates the capacity to, to um, create fear complex or anxiety in, in people's hearts that we're in danger. Well, it's not, it can be seen in, in a, you know, a negative or a positive. Positively speaking, it should be that we turn to the Supreme Lord, even if we're not very mature in, in spiritual life, at least if we turn to God and take shelter of the Lord. It's, uh, in one sense, it's not something which is welcomed, of course, but it may have a favorable side to it also. Um, things like, you know, crises and so on and so forth. If it helps people to turn their attention or take shelter, become more dependent upon the Supreme Personality of God. In the next verse, Tata Tata is interesting. I think in many countries, including India, the word daddy is called Tata. And in other countries, something similar to that, Tata and various things, are there to address one's father. And Tata Tata is the grandfather, father of the father. In other words, Lord Brahma is the father of the living entities in this world. And he comes, as we all know, from the sprouting the lotus sprouts from the navel of Garbhadakshai Vishnu, and from that lotus, Lord Brahma appears, so he's born of a lotus. Um, he's the father of the universe, but Krishna is the grandfather, tata tata. Natanam, also those who are fully surrendered unto you, who are fully surrendered unto you, and <clears throat> the different degrees of surrendered, um, and, and different motives, you could say, to surrender, which we'll talk about later. Hare, we chant every day. <clears throat> Our prayer is primarily the Maha Mantra. The demigods have a specific objective here, and they're also glorifying the Lord with beautiful words, poetic words, with the Mashloka glorifying the Supreme Personality of Godhead, which both cleanses the heart and evokes the Lord's attention. So when we chant the Hare Krishna Mantra with sincere feeling, with the, you know, the genuine um, a purpose within our heart to um, connect again with Krishna, to reconnect with Krishna. Um, and then the Lord will be, it's like when we're attentive to anyone in general conversations or general dealings, usually the other person can detect that we're being, you know, we're paying attention to them. And they naturally become more inclined to um, enter into conversation, et cetera, or relationship. But if we're paying very little or no attention to the other person, then generally speaking, the other person is not likely to have much interest in cultivating a relationship. So similarly, when we chant the Maha Mantra, we're, we're actually a call. So as you understand, it's a call to the Lord. And depending on our level of maturity in spiritual life, the, you could say the understanding may develop in different ways or our feelings may be different at different stages in relationship with Krishna. But at our stage is an appeal to the Lord to please give me shelter, to please give me shelter under your divine energy or spiritual energy and protect me from the material energy. So it's, it's similar, um, because it takes us to the spiritual plane. It's not just the one side, protect us from the material energy. Demigods are not exactly asking for transcendental realization. They're asking for protection in the course of their duties and that which is interfering with their universal duties, which are not our eternal constitutional nature. When we chant the Ma Mantra, that may also be there to a certain extent, we could say, in the neophyte stage for sure. But in the more progressive stage, we're really asking for real shelter, not just temporary shelter in this world. There's no real shelter in this world because we don't belong in this world. The real shelter is the uh, mercy of the Lord to help us to transcend this material world. So it's Shilvyasadeva to help us to realize this. It's composed the Srimad Bhagavatam. 
Mishnah Bhagavatam, specifically there, um, compiled by Srila Vyasadeva, um, etc. Um, specifically for this reason, to try to help us to realize that uh, we don't really belong in this material world. We have duties to perform, we have to deal with the needful, um, but the real purpose of our human form of life is God realization. So let's see, Tava, in this case, is your Hare, O Lord Hari. So we call to the Lord. They're addressing the Lord, they're not addressing some demigod, they're not addressing some mundane personality or the impersonable man. They're addressing the supreme personality of Godhead, Lord Hari. Charana, a very common word, Charana on the feet. The, Sometimes you say Charna Vindu, the lotus feet of the Lord um, are the only real shelter. There is no other real shelter in this material world other than the lotus feet of the Lord. So we take shelter of those lotus feet, which manifest in different ways in this world. Nalina Yugala, a very beautiful word. Nalina Yugala, like two, like two blue lotus flowers. Nalina Yugala, very nice. Dhyana, very common word, meditation. Uh, 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 excuse me. Most of these words are quite well-known words, although the verse itself doesn't stand out as a, a verse which is generally emphasized, <clears throat> principle maybe, but not the verse itself, and there's practically no, no purpose. But the word for word is full of you know, very common um, words, or very important words. Dhyana is by meditation. Um, by meditating on the lotus feet of the Lord. This is the, ultimately, this is the process of getting released from this ocean of material existence. We can transcend this ocean of material existence by meditating on the Lord's lotus feet. Um, so dhyana, which destroys all of the aparabdha reactions within our hearts. The Lord's lotus feet have this purifying effect of of cleansing our hearts of all reactions to our material, both good and bad, our material bondage in this world. So chanting Hare Krishna, although it's not, you could say in one sense, descriptively, it's not necessarily like medit, doesn't seem like meditating on the lotus feet of the Lord, but it actually is because we're approaching the Lord from his lotus feet in a humble way. Taking shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord means this humility, placing ourselves under his protection, under his shelter, with all humility. So in chanting Hare Krishna, this is also the mood of an aspiring devotee. Anu Bada, the word Bada, Nityu Bada, bound up, conditioned souls, so continually bound, Anu Bada. Vidaya, in the heart, of course, a well-known word. Nigadanam, whose chains, chains, let's say, we're chained up in this material world. And that chain can be broken, Chindanti Kovadas Tasya Kona Kuryat Katara Tim, by remembering, this is in the Bhagavatam, first canto, by remembering the personality of God, it will cut the knots or the binding chains which are keeping us bound up in this material. Those chains are not like in positions, they're a result of our own intentions, our own desires to interact with the material energy and to try to exploit and enjoy the material energy, we become bound up in karma, bound up in various unending desires to try to um, you know, satisfy our, our inner needs um, by interacting with the material energy. So we become entangled, bound up, chained up, tied up, in the guna means rope, bound up in the three modes of nature. Um, where are we now? Svalinga Vivarena, by manifesting your own form. Let's see in the purport how this goes in a minute. Atmasatkritanam, of you have accepted your own. Anukampa, a very beautiful verse, a word, compassion, by compassion. Um, anu Ranjita, naturally the Lord is compassionate, we're all his parts and parcels, we're like all of his expansions, his children, whichever way you want to look at it, so naturally the Father is compassionate on his expansions, um, when the expansions, Jiva Tattva, when the living entity um, 
it consciously separates itself from the Lord, although not really, no one can be separate from the Lord, but in consciousness we feel separation and we act as if we're separated from the Lord. The Lord is compassionate and he does what he can to reawaken or reunite us with him any more than a parent whose child is lost wants to reunite with a child um, or we want to reunite with anything which we think is ours. <clears throat> if you lose your wallet and somebody returns it, you feel greatly pleased. You want to even reward that person um, because um, you know, we feel a great loss. And anyone who reunites us with, it, with their wallet is a thank you very much. You're a very great uh, friend of mine. And probably all have had that experience in life, our attachment. Well, the Lord is definitely attached to all of us. It, uh, he's attached to his energy naturally, but uh, he has a free will, just like one may be attached to one's child, but the child has free will to not necessarily cooperate with the parents. So the living entity, the Nichabadas, they've chosen this path of so, in the, trying to be independent of the relationship with God, or the relationship with God is not very... Um, you know, it's like if you have a child and the only relationship with your child is that they come to you and ask you for things and nothing else whatsoever. It's not very, uh, it's not very deep. It's not very fulfilling relationship. There should be some reciprocation there. How can I, how can I please you, daddy? How can I please you, mommy? How can I please you? The mood of, of, of giving a relationship, loving exchange um, with the Supreme mm -hmm. Lord um, is obviously more fulfilling than it is if we're just a, sort of seeing him as a provider, an order supplier, but we do nothing much in return, really. We don't even act in a way that pleases them, nothing. We just carry on saying, please give me, thank you very much. Not very um, deep relationship. Anu Ranji, so he's very compassionate, so he arranges things in such a way as to try to to remind us or help the living entity to um, come to our senses. Anu Ranjita, being colored. Nice. Vishuddha, bright. These words do come up in other places. Ruchira, very pleasing, a beautiful word. Probably gave this name to disciples, actually, lady disciples. Shishira, cool, very cool. <laughs> Smita with a smile, Smita Krishna, Smita Krishna, one of the names of the Lord, he's a smiling face, Avalokena by your glance, Vigalita melted with compassion, it'd be so nice, some of you are probably quite conversant with Sanskrit, so these words are very sweet, and very deep in meaning, Madhura Mukarasa, what a beautiful name, Madhura Mukarasa, of the very sweet words from your mouth, sweet Madhura, Rasa, and the Mukha from the mouth, very sweet. Amrita, another very sweet word, Amrita Kalaya, by the drops of nectar. Cha and unto her within the core of our hearts, inside, unto the inside. Tapam, and this word is a very interesting word, which usually take it to mean austerity, um, it also means suffering, or here, translation, great pain, tapa, suffering. The whole material world living entities are undergoing tapa, but they're doing it for the wrong reason. It's just a karmic reaction. Or they're undergoing voluntary restraint, maybe seen as suffering by others, in order for some materialistic reason, just like Aranya Kashyap was undergoing intense austerities, tapasya, but for the reason of becoming super powerful to conquer the universe and, uh, and to also conquer Vishnu. But <clears throat> tapasya ended up, of course, in another kind of tapasya, great pain. Can't avoid it in the material world. Anaga, a supreme pure. And aga means sinful. Anaga means sinless, so supremely pure. Arhasi, you deserve. Sham, shamai tum to curb. So anyway, it's just nice to, Prabhupada didn't write this word for word for the sake of filling up the space in the book or just convincing a few scholars that there's some authenticity to his translation. Um, but he wrote it 
for a deeper reason, these words are very purifying to remember and to reflect upon um, and to understand and apply in our lives. It's quite a long verse in uh, Sanskrit, but the English we'll read now. O Supreme Protector, O Grandfather, O Supreme Pure, O Lord, we are all surrendered souls at your lotus feet. Indeed, our minds are bound to your lotus feet in meditation by chains of love. Now please manifest your incarnation, accepting us as your own eternal servants and devotees. Be pleased with us and sympathetic towards us. By your love-filled glance with its cool and pleasing smile of sympathy, and by the sweet nectarian words emanating from your beautiful face, free us from the anxiety caused by this vitrasura who always pains the cores of our hearts. And it's a very interesting a kind of, um, let's say, presentation. Purport. Lord Brahma is considered the father of the demigods, but Krishna or Lord Vishnu is the father of Brahma because Brahma took birth from the lotus flower growing from the Lord's abdomen, already mentioned. So that was the purport. And, but in the verse, it's, it's, a, it's a, well, for pious people, this is a common thing, um, whereby um, the demigods, of course, they're mixed, and uh, there's some amongst them are, are sak Sakama, mostly Sakama Bhaktas, and some are Kama, as we heard yesterday, but mostly Sakama, they're mostly somewhat materially tinged, materially motivated, they're devotees, but they turn to the Lord, they recognize that everything provided by God, they apply religious principles in their life according to the, the instructions of Shastra, as much as they, as much as they can, and, uh, but they had, tend to be a little bit attached, and they do pray to God, and they do worship in, and so, and, you know, whatever way they do, um, so they're certainly devotees of kind, but that's a kama in most cases. This, at least this is the mood of Sakama Bhaktas that they're asking um, for. You know, something external in return. And it's quite a common factor that, uh, how do we go back on the other screen now? Stop here, stop sharing. Here we are. Back on the other screen now, right? Okay. So it's quite a, a common feature that, uh, you know, when things are going well, we kind of, we, we forget the Lord and we kind of you know, get absorbed and sometimes into thinking I'm the doer um, and I'm the enjoyer and, and we get a little proud. Sometimes when things go wrong, the tendency of a non-devotee is to blame somebody else if they're, you know, really near for their curse God even give up there any little faith or condemn the whole concept of God's existence. Why is this happening to us? If there's a God, why is this happening? People sometimes say, <laughs> and they give up the whole idea, become atheists or something. Um, and those who are a little shallow, they may you know, question, their doubts come in. Um, and those who are not at all, they start, you know, blaming others and reacting in such and such a way to the situation, become angry, whatever it may be, because of a lack of understanding, a lack of knowledge. So karma bhaktas, even if they have theoretical knowledge of the subject matter, <coughs> they don't have the practical realization to um, understand the deeper intentions or the deeper meanings behind um, spiritual directives, religious principles, even the purpose of human life is still a little bit you know, in the mood that you know life is meant to enjoy. We are this body, although we say we're not. We act as if we are the body and mind, and so on. They usually sakama bhaktas, and they get upset when they don't get what they want, or their faith is disturbed, depending on the level. You know. And that's usually the case for most. We're somewhat in between, maybe. We're somewhat affected like that naturally. And uh, we're aspiring to become Akama Bhaktas, those who are actually dependent upon the Lord, fully dependent. When they're in difficulty now, we sometimes see that even Indra sometimes even challenges the Lord. He gets it. Brahma himself also became a little overwhelmed by his false ego and challenged Krishna. 
um, tested him by stealing the cows from the cowboys. boys. Indra went even further. He tried to kill the residents of Vrindavan because they interfered with his sense gratification. And this is the bottom line in the material world. Anyone interferes with the way I see it, my idea of how things are, is my enemy and has to be dealt with in one way or another. Um, and this is underlying problems all in the whole world is based on this underlying problem that people see their fulfillment of their sense desires as basically the objective of life. And they think that there's pride. This is just a symptomatic of a big false ego and pride, thinking that, you know, the way I see it is the way it should be, or the way we see it is the way it should be. It's the same extension, the same illusion. And um, whereas religiosity and even prayers are not meant to enhance or to further that illusion. They're meant to sever it. Um, generally, we don't like to have these things severed. It's like too painful. <laughs> we want them to be improved. Instead of releasing me from the cause of the problem, we just want to be released from the effect. Huh? karmic reactions they say please forgive me for my sins <laughs> why don't we pray please please guide me so i stop sinning <laughs> don't hear that very often please forgive me for my for my my so-called good activity <laughs> we never hear that one um please don't please release me from the results of my good activity <laughs> who would pray like that <laughs> a devotee is, it doesn't have any interest in good or bad reactions as such he just accepts whatever mercy is bestowed upon him we were reading yesterday what was part of the purple tatena compromise to make shimanam bunjana ibatna pitavi pakam was in proper purple yesterday guideline for all devotees proper said that we take we try to follow in this in the footsteps of lord brahma in this regard so the prayer of lord brahma that uh, whatever you want, my Lord, you can, you know, we're free. This is Lord Chaitanya's special mercy and the special effect of actually taking full shelter in the Sangatan movement. Is it? Actually feels the Lord's protection at every moment, not just when the bombs are raining or when, you know, coronavirus starts to attack or Vritasura appears on the horizon. And I don't know what we think if someone like Vritasura was suddenly to walk into our town or city or wherever we live. You know, how big was he? I don't know. How tall was he? Yeah. Huh? He was bigger than, what was that famous giant in history? That, that Maybe a legend of some kind of, Goliath, right? Goliath. You may not have heard it in England. You've heard of Goliath. Is that right? <coughs> Goliath was a giant, right? And it's so-called legendary. Huh? Yeah. Goliath. I suppose he's a huge guy and maybe 20 foot tall. I don't know. Big. But I think Vintra Sir was pretty much bigger than that. Mm -hmm. you know, it's pretty scary, isn't that big thing? So if you're, you know, we, we may be very proud in our relative situation. We think we're safe and stuff. But then something, when something very big comes along, uh, we feel it makes you, it can help humble a person a little bit. You know, as, as I said before, we were in Portugal a couple of weeks ago. There are people there who surf on 100 foot waves. And 30 meters high, can you imagine a wave and you're on top of this wave, then you're underneath the wave, 30 meters. I mean, that's like a, what, a 10 story building. You're on top of it, and you're just alone on a bit of wood or something. The waves are crashing down. Imagine if you're on the beach and there's a hundred foot wave coming towards you, you'd be pretty scared, right? It's pretty hard not to be. What are you going to do there? You know, you're going to be able to conquer it, put your hand out, stop. <laughs> There's nothing we can do. The whole material nature is like that. In reality, we just, Maya's so clever, she kind of covers us. We don't really see it like that. Try to avoid it. You know? But uh, sometimes the face is you're stuck on top of a mountain. You don't know what to do. It's pretty, uh, pretty, pretty helpless situation. Alone in the ocean is. But actually, we're all in that situation. It's just that Maya covers our consciousness so we don't realize it. We should be taking shelter of the Lord at every moment, not asking, please take these waves away. Please may this wave not crash on me. Um, please help me down the mountain. Okay. So it's a pious, but it's not 
the solution, the mountain's still there, the wave's still there, and we're still in an illusion. Even if our belly is full, and even if there is peace, so-called peace, there's no peace in this world. It's just a kind of a, an illusory definition of a particular situation which we call peace. But there is no peace, there's nothing but turmoil and annoyance in this world. To call him a shash, we come to face it. It's suffering, you can't avoid it. Sounds a bit negative, but that's the fact. That's the constitution of this material world. It's not the constitution of the living entity to be under the influence of the material modes of nature. That's an artificial, or not artificial, but a temporary, unnatural situation for the soul. Just like it's unnatural for the soul to be in the prison. And what will a prisoner pray for? What will they pray for? Let me out, please, God, save me, help me out of here. Or they're on the death roll. Death, what do you call it? On the, uh, the main foot, yeah, the death line. Um, and they'll pray, please. And sometimes they pray, God, say, help me. And sometimes they may just pray, God, protect me or whatever. They may pray. It's, uh, in some ways, it's good for them. In other ways, they will see people see it differently. But in one sense, it's good if we turn to God. But on the other hand, you know, you're still a, you know, you're still in the material world. Whether being in a prison is not a natural situation. And they pray to get out of the prison, but they don't pray to get free of the cause of their being in the prison. That's what has to change. It's not just a matter of killing Ritrasura, but the change in consciousness has to be there. If you take Ritrasura to represent the dangers of this material world, so to speak. But it is to be protected from those dangers is not the fulfillment of one's um, life or prayer even. Their prayer should, that again, is not to be discouraged because at least it's pious and can, with the proper guidance, lead to transcendence. It can lead to liberation of the soul, freedom of the soul from the causes of their being in this material world. As long as we're still embracing or attached to the causes or engaged in the causes, activities which cause us to remain bound up in this material world. So when we look at the, what are those causes? What are those causes that keep us bound up in the material world? We've already, I guess we've already mentioned some of them, seeing things in relationship to ourselves and not in relationship to the Shastra, Guru, and Sadhu or Krishna putting our own self in the center. Who else here could say another reason um, in that regard, the causes of our being bound up in this material? Offenses. offenses to other living. Okay, on a practical level, offending other living entities, and who doesn't offend another living entity? By breathing alone, where in, we may be unaware of it, but we're causing the disturbance to so many tiny little living entities, eating. Everything we do, sleeping, we probably crush quite a few bed bugs. Let's see how bed bugs or some other things. Um, everything we do causes disturbance to someone, he to himself. You can't avoid it, absolutely can't avoid it, materially speaking. What else? Hungry, nutrition. Okay, it's more of a, you could say, a route beyond um, our, you could say, our conscious experience in this world based upon our envy, however form that takes, of seeing myself separate from the Lord, of not accepting the Lord as the proprietor, enjoyer, and controller of everything. Okay, what else? Anything else? Material desires. Of course, material desires, which come about because the nature of the living entity is. The living entity is a conscious living being. Probably said, without desire, there's no life. The living entity has desire, whatever it may be. It may be to merge into the Brahman. It may be to desire to just exist. But the desire is always there. And the living entity in coming in contact with the material world doesn't desire to serve Krishna, uh, desires to enjoy. And it's maybe recognizing Krishna in the beginning, like the demigods do. But the tendency or the main propensity is, I want to enjoy. My dear data. Tata, tata, grandfather, whatever it is, please help me to enjoy. Um, so that mentality binds us in this material world. Vitrasura, we'll see later on, has a very different mentality. Indra is very attached, Vitrasura is not. Vitrasura is attached to the Lord, 
in this attached to the Lord, but in a way, uh, a, a kind of a, more of a, a deal or business deal type relationship. What else binds up? Material desires come naturally. When we come to desire, it has to be some object. Desiring without knowing about Krishna, denying Krishna, then naturally our desires are aimed towards the material energy. One becomes implicated in actions based upon fulfilling those desires which create karma, karmic reactions. Anything else? Anything else which is causal? No taste. Pardon? No taste. No taste meaning what? No interest for no spiritual life. Okay, no so interest. So much covered over. We're so implicated by ignorance. Um, and so just possessed of demoniac or grossly ignorant consciousness. We, we have zero interest in spiritual topics. I'm sure everyone has, has come across this, even amongst their own family members sometimes. Even our own children or members of our own family seem to show no interest. They're so much addicted um, to you know some kind of mundane, frivolous, useless thing that they have no not even time, not even interest in spiritual life, none at all, practically speaking. Matirna Krishna, Paratopsatovani, Todu Padeta Bihari. They're too much attached to family life, too much attached to sense gratification of the interest in Krishna consciousness does not awaken. Not even by the, anyone's effort, it doesn't awaken. They're too much addicted to all these things. And so we, be, we become entangled in this material world. And we're attached to, um, you know, un, uh, unfavorable association. The sign of a Vaishnava Satsangi Chagi Vaishnava Char is that we're not interested in associating with persons. And we may do for the sake of preaching or in the course of our duty, but otherwise, the body has no interest in associating with persons whose interest is mundane. Association is an essential feature in transformation. So, uh, the change in association, and that includes many features it's not just physical uh, interaction with other living entities it includes also for instance the type of um, path which we which we follow most people are following a material path we want to follow the direction of shastra guru and sadhu instead of our own minds but the minds of others so as long as we're following the minds of other conditioned souls um, being influenced by their association um, we remain bound up, and this is the greatest entanglement that's caused by the association of mundane persons, mundane topics which come from them. And most of the time we go on, um, and I have no exception, we go on some site or whatever it may be, and we become kind of absorbed in the topics, and it cover, colors our, our consciousness, and our consciousness becomes colored by those topics is coming from a mundane source. Sometimes we have to know a certain thing, of course, in performing our duty or preaching, but when it goes beyond the necessity, it can cover color, kalatmika, it covers our, our, our consciousness, and it becomes very difficult to remember Krishna because of sex. And to trans, let's say, to connect what we're thinking about in relation with Krishna, may not also be so easy unless we're with those who can. Um, but the tendency is we like to associate with other people who have a similar perspective of that subject. And we start talking about the weather, we start talking about the war in Ukraine, if there is one, or coronavirus, we can spend hours talking about it with no beneficial effect whatsoever. And not even thinking of Krishna once. And then it, it vibrates in our consciousness when we dream at night time or when we're you know, spaced out these are the type of thoughts that come into our mind because we're, we're becoming colored by them. So association is essentially the most important feature in transformation um, from the material, even for the Sakama Bhaktas. If they don't associate with the Kama Bhaktas, you know, this can go on for countless lifetimes like this, uh, being you know, some kind of pseudo-religious kind of approach. And you're inevitably going to commit offense because 
And that further in, implicates entangles us in this material world, and we can actually fall down even from the camelback to collect them very easily, lose one's face, offend a pure Vaishnava, all sorts of things. Um, so very, very careful to avoid committing offenses to others, those who know what an offense is against the name, against the Vaishnavas, against other living entities. We cannot obviously completely um, avoid that, but we don't act in a way to do it. We, we avoid it consciously as much as we can and chant the holy names of Krishna as much as we can so that the other living entity also gets benefited. Um, but this tendency is, is there that we, um, um, I was saying, our devotional service is colored, tinged by this uh, unnecessary, unnecessary association with these uh, attachments we had before. Most devotees have uh, hidden or not hidden attachments from our previous conditional life and attachments from the present. And we like to associate with persons who have a similar conditioning, which is not surprising, that's normal. But if we want to change the condition, then our main endeavor should be to associate with those who are more advanced in spiritual life. There's a famous verse spoken by Lord Kapila Dave. Someone can look it up, please. Show it to me. Um, the Sangha Majaram Basham. Right? How's it go? I mean, we have, maybe we have the book here. Pasangam, look it up in the back. Pasangam, P R A S. P R A S, Pras. Pasangam, it's in the third canto from Bhagavatam. It's a series of wonderful verses which describe the, the uh, amazing effects of association. Because uh, Queen Kunti, um, excuse me, Queen Kunti, um, um, the mother of Lord Kapila Deva. Name, what was her name again? No. Devuti. Is approaching her son, begging her to please release me from this. That's it. Well, I need to have it in front of me here. It should be in that book. I'd like to read it. But I'd like to read all the verses in line. Yeah, that would be the problem. Can, can I go to the next verse from here? Okay. Yeah, we, we don't have books here, otherwise it would be. this famous verse and if you want to check it out it's in the third canto um and i don't know the chapter number it doesn't give the chapter 25. number here 25 chapter 25 here it comes okay we have it on the screen here now you can all see it thank you i guess rasika put it up thanks for it. thank you rasika chapter 25 text 20 the sangha maja ram vasham atmanat kavay ovidahu saeva sadushukto moksha dwarm apavitam another verse to learn is a very well, we Prabhupada really liked us to, to recite verses, even if we can't pronounce them very well. Still, the spirit is there, and the meaning is very profound to all of us. Every learned man knows very well that attachment to the material is the greatest entanglement of the spirit soul. I'm completely entangled in these attachments. It could be to you know something in the past, sport, politics, uh, loving affairs whatever it might be, music, so many things mundane of mundane nature. And they still vibrate and we still allow them to vibrate in our hearts or sometimes externally also. So to be attached is not necessarily a problem. In fact, the soul has to be attached to something. We can't be independent. It's not possible. We have to be dependent, completely dependent. We have to be attached to something. But that same attachment, when applied to the self-realized devotees, opens the door of liberation. And when we say liberation, it can be various kinds, but uh, freedom from this attachment to the material world, freedom from the causes of repeated birth and death. Ultimately, that liberation will lead to attachment to Krishna, of course. But initially, if we see in the nectar devotion, characteristics of pure devotional services, Kleshagni, um, to become freed of the, not just the effects, but the causes of our suffering in this material world, the characteristic of devotional service. So, by association with devotees. Next verse, please, Rasika. Next verse, 21. Oh, they're not in systematic order. Um, I've got some That's of them in right. systematic order. Okay. Very famous verse, the next verse here it is. It's on the screen too. We've got double. Yeah, wonderful. 
Tikshava Karunika Suridasa Gadenam, famous verse, Ajata Shatavakshanta Sadava Sadubushana. And the translation to this verse, the symptoms of a sadhu are that he is tolerant, merciful, and friendly to all living entities. He has no enemies, he is peaceful. He abides by the scriptures and all of his characteristics are sublime. What a beautiful verse. What a meditation on the qualities of a sadhu. We may not, well, for the non devotee, a sadhu may not be very welcome because sometimes they speak uh, quite strong words, words that don't agree with their material endeavors. And go away. Close down the Hare Krishna movement there at this term, just like I was talking to a devotee from Indonesia the other day. We went to take lunch out of France. And I asked him how things going. I haven't been to Indonesia in like 20 years, I think. So he said, not very well. I said, what's happening? He said that the, the Hindus in Bali are again attacking the Hare Krishna movement there. They're trying to stop us because we're a threat to their control or a threat to their illusions. They keep people in illusion and they, they, they like animal sacrifices and they like to even eat cows and things like this, the so-called Hindus. And you know, they're like, they're not following of so many religious principles, but the people are such ignorance that they don't know. They think that's, that's how it should be. So when the people read our books, the Prabhupada books, then they're, their cheating is exposed, so they, they react, and they're the ones who charge politically speaking. So they're politically speaking, they're trying to you know put blocks on the spreading of Krishna consciousness. Not the Muslims, they're Hindus. Uh, they're saying everyone they don't want to hear. If they only knew what this Krishna consciousness means, then what they want to do is to change to the better for everyone to benefit. But People don't know what is in their group. Mm. Like kids, they don't know what's good for them. You know? they don't, drunkard doesn't know what's good for him. Thinks that money so he can buy it on liquor would be good for him. It's not really a drug addict. Or something. Beautiful verse. And the next verse from um, Masika. So sublime. That's a nice verse. It's good to know what the symptoms of a Vaishnava are. Onto the translation, please. Uh, such a sadhu engages in staunch devotional service to the Lord without deviation. For the sake of the Lord, he renounces all other connections, such as family, relationships, and friendly acquaintances with the world. And we can see all this in Srila Prabhupada very easily. How fortunate we are to associate with Srila Prabhupada and how he's cutting through his words, how he's cutting our illusions and our bondages to this material world that causes our suffering. Because people don't associate with sadhus, and even if they see them, they don't really associate and look at them materially. So the bondage is not cut. But when we surrender, when we take real shelter or real association, then they can cut that bondage, which is causing all that suffering and illusion in this world. Next verse. Engage constantly in chanting and hearing about me. The Supreme Personality of God is constantly enchanting, Prabhupada said, is a symptom of the Guru. He's always chanting the holy name, mad for God. Engage constantly in chanting and hearing about me, the Supreme Personality of God. The sadhus do not suffer from material miseries. They look like they do, but they do not suffer from material miseries because they're always filled with thoughts of my pastimes and activities. That's the secret. It's not a question of tolerating them. Or getting freedom. You know, some strength to not be affected by it. No, it's because they're otherwise absorbed. Our consciousness is absorbed in thinking of Krishna. So even in the midst of the greatest danger, they're not disturbed because their consciousness is you know, not in a mundane state. It's focused on Krishna, on the lotus feet of Krishna. And that they're protected from being affected that Haridas Thakur was being tortured, but they were affected actually. Save me, God, from this miserable condition. 
I'll get my own back on these people if I ever get out of here. Oh no, why is this happening to me? Krishna, what are you doing to me? And that wasn't his mentality. He wasn't just tolerating. I'm not the body. I'm not the body. Why should I be affected by the bodily pains? He's not even thinking like that. My bad is not being able. But he's not. He's just focused on the Lord and compassion, of course, with his arts. You could say emotion for those who were engaged in this ignorant activity of trying to kill him. Um, but he was compassionate upon them, but he was focused on the Lord. Thank you, my Lord. And then he, I take shelter of you, but please do have compassion, have mercy upon them. So they don't suffer like an ordinary person. If they're taking shelter of the Supreme Lord. Next verse. Oh, my mother, what a beautiful verse this is. For some reason, it's not in here, but this is one of my favorites. Oh, my mother. Oh, virtuous lady, these are the qualities of great devotees who are free from all attachment. You must seek attachment to such holy men. You must seek attachment to such holy men. Why? For this counteracts. It counteracts the pernicious effects of material attachment all the negative and unwanted and, and horrible effects of material attachment. The counteractive. Not just, it, it, it gets to the root, it counteracts the effects also, but it removes it when they're attached to those sadhus. It doesn't just mean, you know, we put a picture up and do a puja or something, that's a certain start. When we actually surrender souls to their instruction, we make their instruction our life and soul. That's faith, that's that's surrender. And we, you know, we repeat them, but we don't necessarily take complete shelter there. We still have our own perspective, our own attachments, which seem to be somewhat different. And this is perhaps the most famous of all the verses. Mm -hmm. um, Satam prasangam mamavirya sangvido bhavanti vidkarna rasayana kataha tajoshanadashu pavarga bhartmani shradaratir bhakti anukramishyati. And the translation In the association of pure devotees, that's the key. Discussion of the pastimes and activities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is very pleasing and satisfying to the ear and the heart. By cultivating such knowledge, one gradually becomes advanced on the path to liberation, and thereby he is freed and his attraction becomes fixed. Then real devotion and devotional service begin. There's a lot, a lot to talk about in that verse. <laughs> but I, I'm sure if you read the purport, study these verses carefully. Here, in a nutshell, they're the process of transformation freeing us from this material world um, and of attachments therein and then become mm -hmm. an awakening our attachment to Krishna, which has the all uh, pervade all encompassing effects of everything else. Devotional service is not bereft of the results of any other process of freedom or elevation or anything. It contains everything. And get freed from suffering in this world and one gets free and gets liberated from birth and death um, one gets freed from all the causes of staying in this material world and one becomes attached to Krishna and one's desire is satisfying with karnam sayana kataha this subject matter is satisfies the heart the rit vidaya in the heart one becomes satisfied no longer hungry no longer seeing the Lord as an ordered supplier, but just being absorbed in hearing and chanting about his glories. Always, constantly hearing, chanting, remembering, worshipping the personality of God.
this is in the association of devotees, this is the main affection to come to Kata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana. By serving those devotees who are feed of all vice, great service is done, and that knot of attachment is cut, and the awakening in our heart for hearing and chanting, taste for hearing and chanting the holy name, the pastimes of the Lord awakens in the association by serving the devotees, associating from the devotees, hearing from the devotees. This is the process of, of transformation. Otherwise, even though we have some piety, some religiosity, some knowledge maybe, but we see sadhus as again, simply objects to satisfy my material desires, to fulfill my, you know, free me from suffering, and certainly God is definitely, that's his position. And even so, we do not take advantage. We're not much better than the ass and the cow. What's that first? Devashi Bhutatma No. What's that verse? Uh, uh, those who, who consider this body uh, to be no better than, you know, to, to consider oneself this body, which is made of three at the three elements, mm -hmm. because balance stool and air rather, and those who consider their family members to be their own and uh, to consider themselves as this is my place of birth, I'm of this and I'm of that, and so on and so forth. And they go to holy places just to take a dip in the river to get free from reactions, are no better than cows or asses. They're just like animals, basically. Oh, they're pious. In one sense, maybe some piety is there going to a holy place, but it's for the wrong purpose. Yes, and we should go there to hear. They do not care to hear from those saintly persons who reside, um, who are there to give release from all of this entanglement. They don't take advantage of it. Hare Krishna. Okay. Wish you all the very best. Any questions? Maybe online there's some questions coming in. Yeah, was not enough time yet. What's that? What's it saying? No, this was before. What's it saying? In the spiritual world, the Gopis and Radha are suffering a lot from separation from Krishna. So it's sad. If we go back to Goloka Vindavan, are we also <laughs> going to feel sad? <laughs> Hare Krishna. <laughs> it's hard to imagine how sadness can be ecstatic, static misery. <laughs> In this material world, we don't have that experience. But um, what can you say from our material perspective? It may be hard to imagine how that's a, a, a deep, even a deeper form of ecstatic, loving relationships. We can give a little, a little bit of, a, say, an illustration, maybe. Just imagine you love somebody. And it's not quite the same. It's definitely not the same, but it has something in relation. You really love someone, you're separated from them. You certainly feel sad, but your concentration, your focus on that person is often more intense than when you're together. And when you're in any way together or separation from Krishna, it's being with it's, it's just hard to imagine, but you actually are with Krishna in just a different mood of loving exchanges as there, which is even more intense, more ecstatic. It's uh, you can't, Krishna is a reservoir, everything comes from Krishna. So, even apparent sadness in the spiritual, sadness in the spiritual world, reflect in this world becomes misery. But it doesn't, everything in the spiritual world is, is, is ananda, is blissful. So even the expression of sadness or separation, of course, this is something experienced here. And it's not really so separation in the local Vrindavan. This is something that's experienced in this world in Gokul. But uh, in other ways, this question is everywhere. And it just appears that he's not there, but he is there. He's there in your heart. He's, he's completely there in the heart. He's thinking of Krishna. Krishna is fully present. So similarly, even in our neophyte stage, when we think of Krishna, we feel Krishna's presence, but we speak in pure stage. And it increases our, it just increases the reciprocation, it increases our 
a neophyte stage, you could say it increases our determination, devotion, everything. We feel so happy when we remember Krishna, isn't it? Even though he's not in one sense, he's not literally there, but great happiness is felt. So we have to speak of those who love Krishna. Let's speak of him. Anyway, this is <clears throat> we are all separated from Krishna now in consciousness, we're all forgetting him, and we're suffering in the material. <laughs> it's a perverted reflection of that transcendental mood, and the, the Palumbo of separation from the body. But that one is full of ananda, full of bliss. So don't worry. You are not your body. You are not your mind. Because we're on the bodily platform of life. We, we think on that platform, on a spiritual platform, thinking of someone ever immediately present, fully present. Go to Tana Sati Mother Sachi, to Raghava Pandit, to a devotee. Whenever you think of me, I'm immediately there. Whenever you cook, I'm immediately there to accept your offerings. It feels like he's not, but that's even more intense. Oh, Krishna, when will you come? It's even more intense. It is, it's, what can I say? You can't imagine the touch of Krishna, but with blunt senses, we can't experience material senses, we cannot experience this transcendence. We have to purify our senses. Purify our senses. They think that maybe become not just something we theoretically understand, but something one politically experiences. We have to purify our senses. It come about by some you know, mixture there, putting some salt in the sweet life doesn't make it, you know, doesn't improve the sweet life by any means. It doesn't taste nice at all. We don't put salt in the sweet life. So we tend to mix things in with devotional service. And therefore we don't really, we can't grasp it. We don't taste it. Get it. Take shelter of Krishna through book distribution. Thank you for helping us to take shelter of book distribution. At the beginning, you mentioned Goranga book distribution campaigns. Okay, thank Lakshmi Priya from uh, Australia, was the first one of Fatima in London, one of the mm -hmm. French devotees is studying in London, the Bhakti Shas. No, she's doing a Bhakti program in London. And Lakshmi Priya is in Brisbane, she's one of the. <coughs> Great supporters there in Australia, the devotees in Brisbane and so on. So she loves to support book distribution. So what is this? this it's a very small little thing that we're, it's a kind of a bridge, little bridge marathon, which we're doing for Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And because in, in stock, in their French book stock, we have thousands of copies of a little book called Sri Chaitanya. In English, it's called Teachings of Lord Chaitanya. And they've been sitting there for many decades, not, not, practically not being distributed. So we thought it would be a nice idea uh, to distribute those beautiful books on Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So they're amazing books. The teachings of Lord Chaitanya was one of the first books that had, um, had published, as we know. It's quite deep philosophy, but it really, in an essence, it gives the entire philosophy of Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm in terms of the philosophical approach. And also even beyond that, the conversation with Ramananda Roy, um, we see it going beyond just philosophy. Like that practice goes into the deepest uh, crevices of pure devotional service. So it's a very deep book, but it's a very essential book for devotees also. I guess it's a summary of the conversations in Chaitanya Charity and Rita. But we used to distribute this book on the street, along with Nectar Devotion, in the early 70s. Mm -hmm. Many people, um, just by reading these books, became fascinated, intrigued, and uh, wanted to go further. So it's a very wonderful book. So we're going to try to distribute at least a thousand, over a thousand copies of that book to that mini marathon, maybe more, let's see, <clears throat> as well as other books. Just a nice thing. You know, one thing we found in our marathon, Christmas marathon, more than perhaps other times it was there, but we didn't, it wasn't so vivid, is that when we put the um, order of the spiritual master in the center, it can bring unity amongst us. 
We may not be at the point to distribute books ourselves, but we can support it. We can encourage others. In whatever way you distribute books is fine. Being online, through various other channels of distributing this knowledge of Krishna consciousness, that's the principle. And to support those who are doing it, this is also very, very important. Uh, whatever way one can, it may be cooking for them, it may be cleaning for them, it may be bringing books for them, it may be financing the books, it may be driving them to their spots, or whatever, it may be just thanking them and encouraging them in so many ways, offering them service. So it brings unity, it brings unity amongst us. And it brings unity amongst the different groups of devotees too. We've seen that in France, many devotees who are not um, from the institutional point of view, let's say, strictly speaking, um, members of um, from the institutional point of view of ISKCON also love to participate in distributing Prabhupada's books. It's a unifying factor where we can, you know, together, Prabhupada writes strongly in a Chaitanya Chattu. There are, you know, all, all different varieties of Vaishnavas should come together and combine forces to spread this Krishna consciousness all over the world. It may be different flavors, it may be different, maybe, maybe different opinion on various things. Mm -hmm. Institution differences will be there, and maybe mistakes are there on that part, but the general principle is to push forward Krishna consciousness in any way we can. Combine forces, appreciate unity and diversity. We have so many diversity in our own institutional society, what to speak of outside of it. Um, there's so many diversity to get that unity. If we don't get that unity and diversity within us, it would be difficult to spread it anywhere else. We talk about it with the world in general, but if we don't, you know, the religions, but there's no unity and diversity within our own family, then it will be difficult to make any progress in any other way. So diversity has to be recognized. It's not a matter of shut up and do what I say. It's a matter of learning how to appreciate those God-given diversities and connect them without envy in the service of Krishna. Everyone has their part to play. Every part of our body has its part to play. Every living entity has a part to play. So that unity is there. So book distribution is only one. Hari Nam Sankirtan is the primary way which Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu introduced at the Kateri Festival, that was the primary, along with Prashadam, the prime and deity worship installation of deities, primary way of bringing all the devotees together and uniting all the various divergent groups of Vaishnavas under the banner of Nam Sankirtan. This is the, you know, Eka Dharma, the all uh, eternal religion of the living entity can be established by the mass performance of Nam Sankirtan. Who cares less where, where, what color you are, what gender you are, what religion you're in, what you're not in or not in. You know, whether you believe the soul fell from Brahma Loka or didn't fall at all or from a Brahman or from Vaikun, who cares, what difference does it make? Just absorb ourselves in unifying Nam Sankirtan, which Rasa somebody's in. It all, you know, it, it's realized. All this becomes realized and it's this united performance of sanctum, which is the Yuga Dharma. Congregational chanting of the holy name is the means of the step awakening, um, our loving relationship with Krishna, establishing, um, or realizing our eternal identity, bringing about peace and harmony on this plane, on and on you could go. It's the, um, you know, what we say, everything is contained within the Hari Nam Sankirtan congregation, congregational chanting, highest service we can render to humanity and to ourselves and pleasing to the Lord. So that includes book distribution. Now we're just a two week now, so from the 2nd to the 16th of March, up to go appointing. Not everyone's going to obviously all the devotees got other things to do, but it's not like a big marathon, it's a small marathon. So, 
Anything else? I think we're over time. Go on to Sanctum with the Sanctum that was here. So we have to finish there. I'd like to thank you all very, very much for your association. I wish you all the very best. And the opening is coming up soon. So let us remember, if we remember Lord Chaitanya, even difficult things become easy. And if we forget him, even easy things become difficult. So let us try to remember Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, combined form of Adam Krishna. Take shout of Lord Chaitanya, but the form of Sankirtan. Krishna Vana, Krishna Krishna, Sangha Bhanda, Sakashi, Yogya Sankirtan, and pray, Gati, Sumesh. Intelligent persons take shelter of the Lord, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. How? By performing Yogya Sankirtan and prayer. Performing Sankirtan Yogya, sacrifice of Sankirtan. This is supposed to be a tapasya, but as actually Prabhupada said, it is the greatest pleasure. Performing Sankirtan. I try to, as Gopanim approaches, let's try to turn up the, uh, the temperature of our Sankirtan. Uh, Activities. Hare Krishna, Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Contraction of Bhagavatam Ki Jai. A little prayer. I don't know exactly what's happening, but a little conscious prayer for all of the devotees, and everyone's a devotee, really, but especially the practicing devotees, our friends in, in Ukraine, that they're all uh, become even more Krishna conscious and that the Lord will protect their devotional service and also protect them um, in the crisis which is there. In, in Ukraine. Hare Krishna and protection to all of you. And you don't, um, let's say, come under the influence of the modes of nature, but rather we become freed. Hare Krishna. Well, glorious to Prabhupada. Hare Bal. Jai Prabhupada. Hare Bal. Hare Bal. Hare Bal. Hare Krishna. Hari Bol, Hari Krishna. Hari Bol, Hari Krishna. Dublin, Hari Bol, Dublin. Are you? I've got a phone behind. Our background has disappeared. We're not muted. Hari Krishna. Hari Krishna. France and Switzerland and Australia and everywhere, wherever you are, Czech Republic, Malaysia, Philippines, Slovakia, India, yeah, so many places there. Huh? All guys to all of you, wherever you may be. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Eddie Ball. <laughs>